också. Då börjar vi. Ja. Welcome to our presentation. Uh, today we will present our paper. The paper is about how to use English as the medium of instruction at MET institutions. Uh, we have made a pilot study here at Chalmers. First of all, I would like to make acknowledgement to all my co-authors, Anna-Maria Gabrielli, Lars Axvi, Christopher Anderberg, and it will be Rebecca Berman and my, same, my name, Johan Hartler, that will present for you today. First of all, my name is Johan Hartler. I'm a master mariner. I started off as 10 years on car carriers as an officer and last two years as a supercargo, working in different ports in Northern Europe. I joined Chalmers in 2010 as a lecturer in navigation. Uh, I have now six years experience of teaching both the theory part and also the practice part in the simulators. Besides that, I'm current on my way to a PhD and the focus in my PhD is the professional knowledge, what is it uh, amongst mariners and also how to assess it in the simulators following SCCV Manila where proficiency is something we need to assess with the students, not just knowledge. I'm presenting here today uh, in my third role and that is as a head of the Master Mariner program here at Chalmers where my biggest interest and my vision is to look into the education part on tomorrow officers uh, that will work in the international labor market. Hi, and I'm Becky Bergman, and I've been working here at Chalmers for uh, the past 15 years with English and Communication at the Division of Language and Communication, and been working with the, uh, the Master Mariner program here for about seven years. So, the background, why did we do this uh, paper and the study? In the Master Mariner program, we were looking into Division 2025, the senior officer in 2025 is the student and starts this autumn here at Chalmers. Uh, and in that process, we made a SWOT analysis for the program and also for what will be the senior officer. One thing that came quite clear in the analysis was that high proficiency in the English language in the technical context is one really really good thing for the students to have or bring with them into the future life. Of course we also met the industry with several contacts and one contact was with Stina Line and there's from one podcast from the CEO Carl Johan Hagman where he is quite clear that he sees in the future an uh, international labor market on board the vessels where there will be a high focus on the competence. And he also talks about a world where you have, for example, a creation master, a Swedish uh, chief officer, and why not a South African second officer. In a couple of years on board, they will transit the positions that the Swedish will become master, the South African will become chief officer, and maybe a new creation second officer. That's how the labor market on board the vessels will look in 2025, which makes it very, very uh, important to use the English as a natural uh, language on board. Also in the program, in the strategy, there is some goals uh, and one I just want to highlight what is written in red here. Uh, the last year, one year would be given in English, which means that we will have technical courses, but we will use English as the medium of instruction. There's also, in the communication part, a clear goal that the students need to develop cross-circular integration of the content into English, which means when they are on board, when they face a problem, it should be just natural to speak English and not try to use their native language and then translate. Uh, that is not the effective way of communication. So the aim of this study, actually it started as a project 
and the project was to use two pilot courses, bridge work and advanced ship operations in the program to see, okay, if we transform this into English, teaching in English, what will we learn, what can be the experience to transform later courses. Uh, and from that pilot project we wrote this paper. Uh, in the project we focused on the student of course from different perspectives we focused on the lecturer because that's one really important part of the teaching and we were also interested to see could we find any other results uh, and bear with me into the conclusions and you will see our findings which is quite interesting i think uh, for this paper, uh, we focused on the lecture perspective as we are presenting here today, in for the, your lectures. Uh, and uh, th that will be our perspective for this presentation. We will not bring up all things, we will not bring up the theory, but you can go to the paper and there you can find the theory background uh, for this study. We used different methods. From the student perspective, we would like to look into the grade results. Would this be the same? Will it be better or will it be worse when transitioned to English? Uh, we followed up on the course evaluations. We made focus group interviews. And at the end, we asked our English lectures to observe the technical content lectures in the classroom to see if that was really what happened, uh, what came from the focus group interview. Going down to the results sections, looking at the grades. Before you, from the left, you have the grades for 2014 and to the right, 2016. And this is in the course Advanced Ship Operations. We can't say. Uh, anything significant in the statistical part. What you could see is there's a slow shift uh, towards grade 5. So in 2016 there are more students that perform grade 5. Uh, the reason behind that we can't say. We think it could be that the teacher are a little bit more familiar with the teaching as the transition made in 2015 from the native language to the English. Looking at the course evaluation, this is a course evaluation used through whole Chalmers at every course at Chalmers. Below 3 is where you have to make something about your course, you have to remake the course. Uh, about 3.5 is the standard goal for Chalmers. To the left you have the bridge work for 2014 to 2016s, and there's just just small difference uh, between the different years. For the advanced ship operation it was slightly different. Uh, the benchmarking was 2014 that's 3.71 which was when it was made in the native language. Then it went up quite remarkable for the first year was teach in English and then last year it went down again so altogether we can't say there's any difference in the course evaluation between using uh, teaching in the native language and teaching in English as you mentioned we conducted a series of interviews with with the two lecturers who who uh, took these courses and uh, uh, one very strong feeling here was it was a positive feeling, as you once pointed out, course evaluations remain stable, results uh, remain stable. And this is felt to be a very natural training environment for the students. This is the kind of environment they need to, to work in where, where English is the dominating language. And students see the importance and relevance of this in the classroom, that, that the communication is happening in English. But of course there are challenges um, in this scenario. Um, we have a situation right now, we had a situation where everybody had Swedish as their first language, so it's been consistent in use of, of English. Now we have exchange students coming and that situation will, will, will change. 
Um, but, but finding a balance between uh, use of English and Swedish in the classroom. Another challenge is when it, is when it comes to grading papers. Um, some students uh, English use was poor in their in their reports, for example, and then it's finding how to, to grade content when when language is an issue in those papers. Uh, another challenge that came up was was uh, teacher competence. It it puts a whole new um, set of pressures on a teacher when they need to find the the words uh, and so on in English in the classroom situation, and that takes time and it takes training and perhaps a new role for maritime English lecturers then to support um, to support this teaching in the classroom. There were some worries about the quality of input. It's, uh, it's natural that when you're talking your second language it becomes slower, it's less easy to find uh, words, so there was some, some, some worry about whether the input was the same, the same quality. Um, and, and they experienced that students are quieter in this environment, which, which is supported by research as well, that students students are quieter when the language switches to, to, to a second language, English in this case. Uh, we also conducted observations, as Joanne pointed out, um, and what we noticed as positive was, was the challenge to students in this environment. They, uh, when, we, when we observed them in the, in the bridge environment, they were challenged both in interpreting the, the, the information from the radio communication and also finding the right phrases. Uh, and this challenge is a positive challenge. They, they, they need to, to be able to work in this environment and they, they need to be able to interpret these, these phrases. Um, so they, they need that learning process to take place. And we also observed that the teachers were using good pedagogical practices in the classroom. So, for example, giving students a chance to asking a question and giving students a chance to discuss those questions together before they reported back. And this is a very these these practices are even more important in the English environment where students need extra support and help. Uh, challenges here as well. Again, back to the challenge of being consistent uh, in use of English and. Um, there's this balance between opening up for students who are, who are unsure to be able to put the question in Swedish instead, but then also opening the door to to um, more and more Swedish coming in. It's finding that balance, uh, and also encouraging the student participation in lectures that we've talked about before. So our conclusions in our paper then um, it's very clear. Um, and, and you know this as well as we do, that, that fluency and good communication in English are, are essential for master mariners, um, uh, both as students and in their working life. And that uh, we want to increase their exposure to English so they have as, much, as many possibilities as possible. And this exposure is, um, uh, in our situation, we've shown that this hasn't had any kind of uh, negative effect on the courses, or, or on the course evaluations or the grades. Um, in fact, a slight uh, positive improvement. Um, we haven't tested the, uh, the students' language skills here and if those language skills have improved during the course. And that's unclear um, right now. And, and maybe further studies can, can see if, if, if this has a, an influence on their language skills. Um, Anna-Maria, amongst others, have talked about the importance of, of a progression in English skills from year to year, and that's something that uh, we need to look into. If they're going to have a year of studies in English, we want to look at um, how we can prepare the students uh, and also the teachers for that, that working environment. Uh, and then finally, as, as, uh, as uh, Magnus Gustafsson uh, and others have, have uh, brought up at the keynote in the conference, it's very important with constructively aligned activities, outcomes and assessment that contain language goals as well. So in, if we're going to teach these courses in English um, and we want our students to have a good, um, a good level of English, then, then we need to have those language skills in our uh, learning outcomes as well in those courses. Uh, after this presentation, we will be more than happy, both Becky, myself and Christopher, to take a coffee or at least we will meet at dinner time. Uh, this presentation you can also find on YouTube. Actually, right now you're probably looking at the YouTube movie, but we are happy if you like to share it amongst your colleagues at your home university. 
any further questions, just drop an email to myself or to Becky at any time, and we will be gladly be in contact with you in the future. Full reference lists are found in the paper, but here you can see the reference that's supporting the conclusions in these presentations. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Det gick snabbt även. Du, du, jag förstod att du har spelat in det nu. Ja. Ja. Och är det bara rösten som du har spelat in? Inte... Den spelar in skärmen också. Det var och skärmen också? Yes. Okej, okay, det var lite osäker på. Uh, då ska vi se. Var ligger den nu då? Är den fortfarande igång? Där. 